viruses. I have never studied the history of medical and pharmaceutical inventions, but my experience with so many doctors in small towns in India tells me that they never uttered the word virus till the late 70s of the last century. All that they seemed to know was that if your classmate or the neighbor caught cold, they were bound to pass it on to you irrespective of whether both of you wanted to exchange it. <coughs> if you wanted an immediate relief, the advertisement of Coldarin in the newspaper saved the doctor's fee and cured your cold. When I was in the sixth class, our smart class monitor told us a very good trick. To keep reading the Coldarin advertisement like a prayer for a week and your cold vanished automatically. You could save that money and buy a chocolate instead, she said. Later, I moved to Mumbai, the then Bombay, and stayed in a hostel. By then, I had become curious and bold enough to ask our campus doctor as to what the cause behind any occasional illness was. And the doctor had his answer ready. Viral infection. The real cause which I surmise now was getting homesick. The term viral infection encompassed all kinds of usual ailments the hostelers get from cold and cough to stomach pain, and from a headache to conjunctivitis, which almost every other Bombayite never escaped during monsoon. With the passing of years, the number of viruses started increasing. Do you think I am making a sweeping generalization? No, you are mistaken. As viral infection became the root cause of many ailments, I became a half doctor and started telling my physician as soon as I entered his consulting room that I had a viral infection and needed medicine. He would scribble something on his paper which only the chemist could read and saved me from the clutches of a pathologist. When I started working, viruses also came handy in getting leave. Sir, I am feeling feverish, perhaps due to some viral infection. I would tell my boss during lunch break, My goodness, Mane, go home immediately, he would say. He was scared that I would pass on my viral infection to him. Had it been really so, my entire office would have thanked me. I understand that during the COVID-19 time, many people benefited this way even without actually getting COVID-19. There was a sudden explosion of viruses even prior to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. But the laboratory scientists never consulted me. I had the common sense to point out the reason to population explosion. After the dark age of the COVID nearly ended everywhere, pharmaceutical companies have kept their R&D team busier than ever. Their task is to work out the possible variations in microbes of the coronavirus and then produce the new formulas of combination of drugs as a possible remedies. You never know just in case. Viruses thus have a great potential for their business expansion. When men catch viruses, can robots be far behind? And by virtue of being the 21st century robots, they will catch them only through computers. 
these are obviously the man made viruses men have generated them due to their great potential for employment generation after all they need to absorb the millions of engineering graduates passing out every year IT professionals generate the computer viruses first and then write programs to kill them the creators and killers seem to be conniving with each other after all they have to be worthy of good alumni who must ensure that their college would never be closed down forever not only that it must have an economic boom without a break our scientists seem to be overly busy in identifying the physical viruses in the process they have simply overlooked the psychological viruses the most widespread among these is the hurry virus once it catches the person utters the word busy all the time These days I make myself a big fool inquiring any young person as to how he or she is many of them either ignore my question or look at me pitifully for wasting my time and theirs too in such a meaningless conversation they no longer respond by saying that they are fine they have no time to talk even a full sentence they would only mutter the million dollar word busy and vanish if they smile they think it is a big favor to me by recognizing my existence mobile phones are all the more busy in keeping people busier than ever but the fact of the matter is mobile phones come handy in creating an aura of busyness by itself the mobile phone is immobile but it can say that the number you are trying to call is currently not reachable please try again later or the person you have called is speaking to someone else the mobile phone owner may be busy eating in a roadside food joint but can easily boast later of being busy in a business meeting over a century ago in 1911 the poet w h davis lamented what is this life if full of care there is no time to stand and stare if he ever reappears in the busy metros he would utter Alas what do i stare amidst concrete jungles mobiles and sting of hurry virus <laughs>